avocado, I'm going to use some sun-dried tomato and some mozzarella cheese. Just for my avocado, just peel avocado. Avocado is very, very nutritious. Avocado, hit it with a knife and then it takes out the, the stone, catches the stone for me. So just be careful taking that off. And now I'm just going to cut that in two. I don't, we don't need a whole lot of avocado. Now, usually if an avocado is ripe, you'll be able to peel it like that. Okay, so I've just quartered it, okay? So, I'm just going to put a piece of avocado on the chicken. Avocado, if you're, especially if you're making this in advance and you leave it in a while, the only thing about avocado, avocado, once it, hits, once it gets uh, oxygen in the air, it starts to go brown like an apple or a banana. So a little bit of lemon juice will stop that. And I put a little bit of pepper on it as well. A little bit of ground pepper. Now I'm not going to use salt in the, uh, to season this because our sun-dried tomatoes that we have here, okay, sun-dried tomatoes, obviously a lot of the Mediterranean countries, all Italy, Spain, whatever, they dry tomatoes in the sun, they slightly salt them, it takes a lot of the moisture out of them, and then they dry out, and then they preserve them in oil. It's a way of keeping the tomatoes. Whatever. So we'll just put a, a sun-dried tomato in there. Now, the next guy I need is a mozzarella cheese, okay? So mozzarella, we usually see mozzarella, it's usually grated. Mozzarella is the cheese that would be on top of your pizza. Mozzarella kind of, when it's hot and melted, it stretches, it goes stringy. So the kind of thing that, uh, that you have on your nice hot pizza. Now, this mozzarella, mozzarella cheese, okay? A lot of mozzarella cheese and all the ones that you would be actually getting on your pizza. This one here, it comes, it's like just a, like in a ball of mozzarella, and it's actually in a brine, okay? So that's just uh, salt and water. It's put into the brine and helps preserve it. That's just packed in a plastic bag. Okay, so that's our mozzarella. Mozzarella is made, I tell you mozzarella, and even here, it's even here in farms here in Ireland, it's made with buffalo milk, okay? A buffalo, um, it'd be kind of um, a European breed of buffalo, or whatever, so that's what's used traditionally. Now, mozzarella, you can just break it up. This is lovely to use in salad, okay? You could do an avocado tomato salad with this or whatever as well. So we were just gonna, we're gonna put a little bit of our mozzarella in here. Now, I'm going to take each chicken fillet, I'm going to place it over the top. Now, oh, finish the plastic. And then, just simply just fold the chicken that we, we spread out. So we just fold the chicken over. Now, for flavour, so even a little bit of flavour, I have a parma ham. Okay, parma ham is a near dried ham, it's not actually cooked. Okay, at this stage it is eaten, it's eaten as a, as a first course or whatever. Uh, the Italians would call it antipasti, so any kind of, that's what their starters would be. I just want two slices of that, I'm just going to put that. This is going to be my side of chicken that we're going to present upwards. So just put a slice of ham over it. So I didn't add any, I didn't add any salt to the recipe and I'm not seasoning it with any salt because the ham is quite salty. Okay, there are my two breasts of chicken. So I'm just going to use a little oil, just to brush in the bottom of, of, of the tray. So it's just an oven-proof dish. And I'll place the rest of the chicken on there. Now, because the parma ham is so thin, right, if I was using, I could use ordinary, maybe streaky rashers, if I cut the rind off them and roll them round, i put them into the oven and I wouldn't cover them, okay? Because the, the, the ham is so thin or whatever, I'm, go, I'm actually going to cover it with a little bit of greaseproof paper. Then just brush I'm going to brush that with oil because I don't, I don't want it sticking to my parma ham. Go over there. And then I'm going to use a little bit of this oil. And this goes into the oven for 25, 30 minutes at 160 degrees. Depends on what your oven is at home. 
if it was a conventional oven, uh, maybe a little bit hotter, it would be 180 degrees and it might take a little bit longer. But if you have a, an oven, a fan assisted oven, it can, uh, a half an hour should easily do it. Again, it depends on the size of the breast of chicken that you're using. If it's slightly larger, it might be a little bit longer. Okay, so I'm going to put that into the oven. Sage. We're going to make what's called a rosti potato and I'm crossing over a little bit into a different country. I'm going to, uh, a rosti potato would be from Switzerland. So I just have, that's a rooster, okay, and what I'm going to do, I just want to grate that. And I have my ring on here, and I just put a pan on that. that. That could be getting hot for me. Okay, and I'm just going to grate. So that's my potato grated on the box grater. Now, to that I'm just going to add a little pinch of salt. Salt is a little bit damp now, so... And a little bit of pepper. And also that then... I'm going to add some chives. Okay? We're looking up here, out just outside, just outside the front door here, we have, a, we have a herb garden. This time of the year, even though the weather has been fairly cold, we have some of the, some of the herbs are coming back. The ones, the perennials that would grow, come back every year. <coughs> These are chives. Um, very, very handy to have in your garden. A chive, okay, chives, chives are actually the smallest member of the onion family. So what I want to do is I want to chop them up fairly fine, so I'm going to make a, a, a nice little bundle out of them here. I'm going to pinch them here, and then I'm just going to Leaving the point of the knife on the board, I'm just going to do a circular motion like that. So, chives are nice and finely chopped. Now, you could also you could put a little bit of cooked, chopped up rasher into that, a little bit of uh, crispy bacon, a little bit of diced onion, whatever you like, a little bit of cooked ham or whatever into that, okay? And you can make it just use it like, like a potato cake. Right, so I'm just going to put that into the bowl, so I can give it a little bit of a mix. And I'll just mix that up. Now the pinch of salt that I've put into that, right, will start extracting the, the water out of it, out of the potato. So, my pan, it's going to get nice and hot now. So a little bit of oil on a pan. Move that around. Sure. Now, I have just two rings just to be fancy. You don't need to be fancy, you can just stick them on and make a pancake out. We'll just get a nice round shape and we're going to use the cutters. There either, you can either use a scone cutter or one of those is a special cutter, a special plating ring for making nice shapes. Okay, so I'm just going to take all of the mixture into my hands, all my potato, chives, and a pinch of salt and pepper, right? I'm going to get that and I'm going to squeeze it. Wouldn't need those that much water in the potato. Okay, that's the salt helps that come out. But what I have done as well, right, is I haven't washed these potatoes in cold water or anything. I, I had them, I, when I had them peeled, I, I kept them in cold water so they wouldn't go black on me. But um, once they're grated, don't get any water near them, whatever all this. Because what we want to do is we want the starch of the potato. That's what's going to keep our potato cake together for us. Okay, so we get that. And put that into our cover. That could be a lot hotter. Lovely. And now, while I'm waiting for the potatoes, I'm just going to get a nice little colour on those. I'm not going to be able to cook those completely in the pan, okay, because of the thickness of them. If I did want to cook them in the pan, that amount of potato that I had there, I could make one flat pancake with it, okay, and spread it out into a larger circle and have them maybe just about a centimetre thick, and then cook it slowly until it browned on each side, and then it would cook the potatoes through. But in this case, now we're going to kind of we'll, we'll, uh, put them in the oven. I just want them to colour first. Okay, so 
For the next stage of this is the tomato sauce. And for the tomato sauce, I'm going to use some onion. So, this is just an ordinary, what we would call a white onion or whatever, all the rest here. Um, an onion, okay, an onion grows, it's a bulb, okay, and it grows, it has a fibrous root on the bottom of it, alright. This part here will be the part that would have the green stalk that would come out of it, and they start growing over even if you, if you have onions for a while and you haven't used them, this time of the year especially, they spurt and you get to start to shoot again, okay. So that's this your onion. So what I want to do is, right, I want to peel the onion and I want to dice the onion finely. So because I want to dice the onion finely, I need to kind of keep the onion all together. So I'm just cut the top off, okay? Now on the bottom, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim that root, just very barely trim that root, okay? Two things on that, if we cut into that root, you get a kind of a white milky substance comes on, comes to the bottom. That's actually the, that's actually the, the uh, the part of the onion that will actually make you cry. So I hope I don't start crying now. I'll try and avoid that. Okay, so I've just taken off the outside layer. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is put it down with the root side up and I'm gonna cut the onion in half down through the root. Leave that half there. And I'll put this half, put it down flat then, right? And on the top of the onion, you kind of have natural lines on it. So what I'm gonna do, just put the top, with just the very top two centimeters of the knife, even not even that. Just the very tip of the knife, again, my fingers, I have my thumb at the back, my fingers bent in away from where the knife is, okay, and then I'm not going the whole way through, and I'm slicing it then, I'm slicing the slices as thick as I want the dice to be small, if you understand, right, I'm not going the whole way through, so I'll just the whole way down along like that, okay, and I can do that and my onion is still all in one piece, okay, because it's all attached to the root, alright, so then I have it like that, when I have it sliced like that, I simply turn it, put my knife down, and like I did before with the chives, now I just cut along this way. And then just the end piece we can cut up a small bit. But don't need the root, okay? So that gives it nicely, fine, finely done. I'm just gonna run the knife through it then, just to make sure they're all nice and small. This is going to be the tomato sauce, okay? So very very particular about the size of the dice now it doesn't really matter because I'm going to liquidize the sauce afterwards. Okay. Now also for, the, for my tomato sauce I'm going to just I'm going to move my onion over here just to the side of my board. And the next thing I have also from our garden outside right it's a herb it's a herb called oregano or the Americans call it oregano. Okay, so just very small little leaves, there are different varieties of it, okay. It's the smell you get from a freshly baked pizza. That herby smell from a freshly baked pizza. It goes very, very well with tomato. As I say, we have it fresh outside there now, but I just pulled a few small little leaves because it's only starting to come back. Okay, because of the cold weather. So, put that in there, that'll give it a nice flavour. Now, the next thing I need is some garlic. Okay, so this is our bulb of garlic, and so what I'm doing is I'm just going to break off one clove. One clove would be plenty. Now, when I'm doing the clove of garlic, just like that, the opposite really, with, with, to the onion, with the clove of garlic, the only thing I'm going to cut off is just the very, very root off the bottom. Okay, skin come away with that. And then I'm going to put the garlic down, down, put my knife flat on the top, and squash it. Okay, lift it up. <laughs> Give you a fright. Okay, that's my garlic. Skin has gone off it. Just comes straight off. Okay. So what I want to do with that, I'm going to chop that a small little bit. Like that. But I also, um, the more you chop garlic, the more it releases uh, that its flavour. Now at this stage, I'm going to have a little look at our potatoes. That goes down on top there. As I say, I'm making these a little bit higher, just to kind of maybe to look nicer. And um, I'm just using the knife. Now, after years of uh, punishing my hands, I'm actually touching these rings. They are pretty hot. Okay, so just keep that in mind if you are going to use a ring. So what we're going to do is then we just I'll just move this over for you. Mm. See it a little bit better. Well, just turn it over so they're nice and golden brown. So we'll leave those for a minute again now. Now, just back to my garlic, okay? What I want to do is I'm just going to put a pinch of salt on the, on the garlic, not too much, because we have the salt and the bacon and everything so far. 
Okay, so just pinch of salt on it, and the knife, this time with my knife, I'm gonna leave it, the point on the, on the bench, on, on my board, but I'm gonna have the knife flat, and what I'm doing is just rubbing it. The salt kind of acts as an abrasive, and I just rub the garlic like that, and just bring it back together into a small bunch like that, and do the same thing again. So I just do that a couple of times, and that releases all the flavour of the garlic. So I'll put that put my onion. Always, I always allow the saucepan to warm up first. So what I want to do now, just bring my board over. My saucepan is warmed up. I'm going to put my onion in. And we'll let that sweat, sweat a little bit. Next thing I want to show you, just very really simply, is right, um, it's wild garlic, okay? What we've done, just to, to make an oil, to help finish our dish, to help actually just put it into some olive oil, okay? A little bit of salt and pepper into it, and we liquidise it, okay, until it's smooth, and we just keep that. That'll last it. The sauce has been simmering now for a few minutes. So you just need to bring it to the boil, simmer for a few minutes, and it's to heat. And I'm just going to use my liquidizer just to make it smooth. So with a little bit of noise now. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now we're gonna get on to the to, to the plating up stage now this now. Um, we'll have our sauce ready, we have our garlic oil ready, and have our two plates. We have our roshti potato. Now, what I'm going to do, just to make it fancier, I'm going to put some tomato sauce in the plate. I'm going to spread it out. Just going to blur a little bit. So I'll spread that out around. Okay, so, just out to the edge of my plate. Just out to the rim of the plate. Okay, so we put on our plate cake. Chicken, it's just out of the oven. Now, we're a little bit stuck for time, just to keep things setting on time. You could cover that and leave it rest for maybe a few, just a few minutes, just for it to settle. Let the juices go back into the meat or whatever the chicken and all the rest. So I'm just going to check this now again. <coughs> and that's that's got 75, just 76. So now I'll just catch it by bone. And I'm just gonna, just gonna slice it. Okay, press the chicken Italian style. Okay, thank you very much.